Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this. This is Sam Prentice Makes Things Happen. I'm Sam Prentice back once again making it happen. And today, I believe in this box, I've got the new version of the Anycubic Viper. Now, what are the key differences on that? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are about to find out together what the differences are. Don't forget guys to hit that subscribe button and click us a little like. Towards the end of the year I am going to be giving away two, that's right, two Anycubic Vipers to my subscribers. So all you need to do is hit that subscribe button and you will be put into the wheel of fortune towards the end of the year. So watch this space for more details but it's important that you do click that subscribe button right now. Let's get on with this, let's stop talking, let's move on to opening this box. Here we go. So this is what we have inside the box. We have the hot end, and this is the newer version, I believe. The reason I can tell that is because it has got a different plug on it. So that's certainly encouraging. So I'm hoping that all new users now will be getting this new kind of kit. So in here we have the usual printer cable, a scraper, uh, the SD card, the Anycubic warranty, uh, a little bit of PLA, a couple of screws, and one or two other little bits and pieces in there. And the good news is we have got a UK power supply, which is beneficial to you if you are in the UK, of course. And then we have an instruction manual. And I am expecting to see some differences with this. Um, certainly if they're going to be talking about the levelling problem that we previously had and spoken about in the past. This is the same. This is very, very nicely packaged, actually. There's our little screen as well. Here we go. Let's pop that down as well. And we've got the top of that, pop that down there. So the interesting thing I would say about this printer straight away is the fact that they have changed this entire setup here. Uh, the changes are on this plug, they are on the Z probes as well, which are the, uh, the ends on here and also on here. And I believe the feet have changed as well. Okay guys, so this is a relatively simple install here. All we're gonna do is put these slots into those slots. Now just make sure, I have seen a few people online that have jammed these down and wedged the cables in and caused some damage to the cables. So just be really, really careful when you're popping this in. Don't rush it. Just do it nice and gently, pop it in. And we should be good to go. Okay, we are there. Now, obviously, much like some of the other printers out there at the moment, the tools are actually going to be installed in the front here. Um, previously, I think they also had the SD card in there, but that isn't in this box. Uh, but they've installed that back in here. They've also put a couple of extra bits of rubber in there, which I don't think I had previously. But there they are at the front there. I'm probably not going to use those until I get to the bottom and have a look at the motherboard. Now, in regards to the connections. So in regards to the connections, they are pretty simple. You just need to join up the dots. So you've got uh, ZR, so that's going to be the Z axis on the right, which we just plonk straight in the bottom here. And we're going to be doing the same on this side as well. I'm going to run that through here. Just plonk that in. And then we've got a Z stop there as well. That's a little switch. And on this side we have the same again. So I'm just going to plug that one in. Just like that. And what's this one for? This one's going to be for the screen, obviously. Okay, so let's start removing some of these bits and pieces. Get some of this rubber out. All this uh, plastic out. Even that. Okay, and then we have this bit here. And as I said before, underneath there are some bits that need to be cut. So I will quickly use the snips, these little little baby snips on that. And they are across the hot end here. Just be careful how we cut. Just remove that one. And on the Z right. And the Z left. that and then of course underneath here we are 
can see at the front there. I just need to cut that as well. It's a bit fiddly getting in there. But if we pull him forward, just like that. We should be able to cut that one off without too much problem. There we go. Okay. Okay, there we go. Easy peasy. Next, we have the screen to put on. And I'll, just for shits and giggles, I'll pop this one on the side as well. Okay, so the three key differences which you would have seen on the site already, I imagine, is going to be this clip here, which this is the R1, this is the uh, wax that they put on there, which is a bit kind of naff. So they've actually changed the shroud here, and that's a different part as well now, and it mounts onto this block here. Uh, everything else seems to be pretty much the same. And another key difference is the way that these are mounted now. On the other one, they were adjustable, and I can show you here actually on the other one this one there they're adjustable you can undo this and this will move up and down for whatever reason I can only imagine it's going to be a uh, censoring problem um, with the probe this is what they've installed now instead this uh, this hard metal thing now ironically the third thing is actually these round feet versus the big flat feet that they had previously actually they weren't very good these look much more sustainable uh, you've got a couple of different colors and screws and what sits but other than that it is pretty much identical there um, I had an EC rare again there's a sticker that's different but I mean to be honest that's pretty much the only different the only key difference is there uh, the extruder seems to be exactly the same on each of those I've actually taken one of my sen the sensor off on mine because I know what I'm doing I tend not to run out of filament um, so there we go so that is the key differences, guys. So there are gonna be a couple of things I do wanna test right off the bat because of some of the issues that we've had with the strain gauge and things in the past. Now, in here somewhere, we should see a light on, potentially. Don't wanna move this around too much, but we're gonna home it and see what happens. Everything's plugged in, everything's looking good. So let's hit the prepare button and let's hit leveling. And let's see if we're able to auto level. Here we go. Okay, and off we go. And fingers crossed now, it won't crash into the bed. As I said before, if it does crash, that's good. There we go. Now normally if it fails it goes directly to the right and that's the end of it. It's really taking its time on the probing. I must say on the other Viper I've got is much much quicker than this. If you are interested in this printer it's currently in at $359 and it comes equipped with a new 32-bit motherboard with high performance Core X M3 microchip which is supposed to be really, really super fast. The integration of TMC silent step drivers and both of those combined obviously make it super, super awesome. I am quite impressed obviously with the auto bed leveling now that it works. It is a quick assembly. Literally that was four, five, six, seven screws and we're done. It has got a reasonably large touch screen at 4.3 inches. It's silent printing uh, within, uh, within the reams of that. The build volume is 245 by 245 by 260 high. Uh, the print resolution is 0.1. You will be able to print the following supported filaments, which are PLA, TPU, ABS, PETG, and wood. And it's not gone wrong for me at all. You are running a 24 volt power supply at 14.6 amps. And the overall machine size is 508 by 457 by 516. And the package weight is around about 10 kilos. <laughs> So we're now waiting for this to get up to temperature. It only needs to go up a few degrees. Okay, the old version is going first. It's 
see there, it's got up to temperature much quicker than this one. Still waiting for this one to wake up. Okay, so the older one has started before the newer one. I don't know what the reason is for that. And it's already dropped some filament on the bed already, unfortunately. There's a bit of spotting in there. And we're still waiting for this one to take charge. It is actually going at this point. You'll find that the bed seems to slide really slowly to start with. Uh, but I won't hold it against it. Now I might need to tune in the Z. Although we seem to be okay. We're not putting any filament out at the moment. It might just come up just a tiny bit. Okay, that's looking good. Let's click OK with that. Now, the other thing you may notice is the light on this one has given up the ghost. Now, someone was mentioning this earlier about the light going offline. I don't know why that's done that. I don't know how it's done that, but it's done it. And uh, I've also upgraded the firmware in this a little while ago, uh, but it's nothing special. So it's a bit weird that that's now no longer working. And obviously this new one is. We'll see what the first one is to finish. was lucky so the results are in and unsurprisingly the quality is actually minimal in regards to the differences between the two and I'll just quickly show you these two here now the one on the right is actually the tuned machine which is the older version because it's also got some pet on the bottom of it and it's so marginal but looking at it here right now I can actually just about see that this um, this one on the right which is the, the older machine, is has got some slightly better clarity to it, even though it's an older machine and the nozzle's been used to death. Um, and of course here is the, if you can see that, let's try and get some focus on it. This is the new machine. And again, the print quality is actually pretty phenomenal. And with a little bit of tuning on that, you'll have a really, really good print. So the three things to take away from this, the feet don't really matter. The leveling probably does matter and the fact that you can no longer kind of adjust those and move those around and tweak those around. Um, I don't know why they've made that mod, but I'm going to find out, so uh, I'll ask that question certainly on Facebook. And finally, obviously, the clips. Now, that made sense because it was a bit of a pain having to unpick the wax and glue and silicon and stuff that they put on that. So hopefully this kind of enables you to understand a little bit more about what any Cubic have been trying to do. I am aware also that there might be some new customized firmware coming out very, very soon to open up the options on this. So certainly watch this space on that. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, guys. I am giving away two Vipers very, very soon. And the good news about this new printer is that the strain gauge didn't fail first time. So I'm going to continue to use it. And of course, if I do get any problems, I will continue to update you guys. So hopefully that's been helpful to one or two of you. Good luck if you've already purchased one of these. Keep me informed in the comments on where you're at if you're having any problems, and we will see you next time. Take care. Bye for now.